Hiya, it's me again, Sarah, talking to you about hinge behaviours and those key, key, key behaviours and or foods to start to try and crack to get you back on that recovery journey and making it so that suddenly behaviours start to lessen and lessen and lessen as you go through. The next one I'm going to talk about are, is actually a food type. Um, so, so far I've done weighing yourself and weighing food. And the next one I'm going to do is actually about butter and oil and um, fats. Now, that word, fat, you know, let's just get it out there. It's just a word. It's got three letters. It's a tiny, insignificant word. It means nothing. OK, so just and we're going to say it, we're going to use the word fat a lot in this uh, in this little video. But oils and fats and butters are super important because obviously, again, from a hinge behaviour point of view, they open up a huge catalogue of different foods and also what they do once you start to lessen the fear around butters and oils and fats you start to lessen the fear of other people preparing your food now i know that might seem like a strange connection but for me it was a huge connection the fact that i one of the biggest fears i had about other people preparing my food is what they were putting in it not the like the the vegetables or the the, the chicken or whatever that was going in it it was the other stuff you know where i might use bullshit well, I didn't use any mayonnaise, but imagine I used bullshit mayonnaise. What if they use full fat mayonnaise, etc., etc. OK, so it also meant that you didn't have to have like Sarah's special portion of stuff when you went out to cafes or restaurants. And with things opening back up again, this is really important that we get used to eating back out again. But it meant that, you know, if if you were ordering a, I don't know, a stir fry, for instance, in, in a restaurant, it wasn't like, oh, can I have it stir fried? But can I have the the, the uh, sauce on the side? And can I have this? And can I have these noodles instead of that noodle? And, and all those choices that, that she was making for me, um, as soon as I started to get used to fats and oils and butters, it meant that I was less afraid of eating out and letting other people prepare my food. So that's why this one is a hinge behaviour. It's also a really, really important one because in anorexia recovery, fats and oils and butters are really, really important. We need that in our system in order to help with our body's repair. So it's really important that we don't avoid them. OK, so how did I do it? So butter was the first place I went to. Who doesn't love butter? I mean, it's class. Um, I was label queen when I was poorly. So like I knew every label that there was known to man and I would scour and search the supermarket in order to buy the smallest, lightest, tiniest little portions of things. Um, and I do the, the shopping in my house, you know, I, I just always have and, and I always will do. And, and I got to the stage where I'd have like the shopping for everybody else and then a little basket on the end, especially with my special things in it. And in there was like, obviously there was no butter and stuff. But if there had have been, then it would have been kind of, you know, the lowest of the low that I could find. So my decision for butter was I went for butter rather than marge because there's loads of different choices of marge. And that then allowed me to get into a spin in the supermarket over which one to have. Now, butter, it's just the gold block in Tesco and I grab it off the shelf. Yeah, in many other places, it's gold as well. You know, it's gold in the co-op. I think it's gold in spa. Um, and it was getting me into use of just kind of going and grabbing and taking it and bringing it home to use. OK, so it was just a case of grab. Also, on proper real butter, there's no option for a low calorie version or, or a less dense version. So you're not you know that anorexia is not going to be in control and you know that you're not robbing yourself of any of those really important nutrients that you need. So you buy it. But then I'm no fool. I know that then, oh, yeah, I'll buy it. But then it sticks at the back of the fridge and nothing happens. So what you have to then tell yourself you're going to use it. And the, the rule is you put butter on anything possible. Simple as. So you start putting butter on bread again, on toast, on crackers, on my friend's Put, put my, my best mate puts Weetabix, butter in between Weetabix. She's like a Weetabix sandwich. Lovely. Um, you know, I said crackers. Um potatoes, mash, jackets, anything you can think of that you're cooking that has a potential option to put butter in it, you put it in because you have to go through that process of reteaching your mind and your body that butter is a really good thing. The rules when you're spreading, don't weigh it. OK, so don't weigh the butter because that then goes back to the other hinge behaviour in, in the previous video and we're not going to weigh food anymore. So you don't weigh it. The rule is you just cover it. You go to every corner simple you know quick thing of your knife every corner every bit both slices there's your toast for your soup or whatever you have it 
Okay, so butter is my first. Just grab the gold block. I didn't mess around with main, um, margarine, sorry, because of the labels. And then just make sure you're covering every inch of your bread and then put it in whatever food that possibly can go into. Oil was a three glugger. Glug, 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 glug. That was it. Simple as that. And then again, simple like butter, that went in everything that possibly could go in. So if I was having a salad, and this was tricky, it was making salad dressing, a three glugger, glug, glug, glug. <laughs> and then add in mustard or lemon juice or whatever it is you wanted as well to it. Um, oil every time you were cooking in the pan, oil in uh, like roast potatoes, Yorkshire puddings, etc., etc. Getting used to seeing the oil on, on a plate as well. Getting it on your hands, you know, when you're handling chicken or handling whatever. Feeling it again, feeling a bit sticky that I know that can be a real issue for some people. But once it's in, it's in. And once you start to do it and use these hinge behaviours and go through a little bit of pain to start off with, it becomes easier. And then it opens up A, for you to be able to have butter whenever you want it. B, to start being able to taste things properly again. You know, mashed potato is so much nicer with butter. Scrambled egg is so much nicer with a little cheeky bit of butter in it. Or a load of cheeky butter if you want. Um, everything. Life is better with butter, fats and oils. So simple, a few little steps there for you to hopefully help you out if you feel like you're in a little bit of a pickle with fats, oils and butters. Join me again soon. Take care.